Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Blair Kerner and I'm the bassoon instructor at Syracuse University's Setner School of Music. So today our topic is Liebestrom by Franz Liszt. Now this was published in 1850. It was originally published in two different ways. One was as a leader, which basically means song, so it was for vocal and a um, piano accompaniment, and the other was for just piano by itself. Um, since then, it has become very popular. This was actually in a set of three different songs that were kind of put together into a grouping. This, this melody is the third one and is actually the most famous of all of them. And because it was a leader, a song, it means that there's words to it. It actually comes from uh, a German poem, poets, um, which I've attached the uh, English translation and down at the bottom, as well as the German, uh, German original words, so you can see it. But this is a piece about love. So it's a very beautiful, lyrical piece. And there's a few things in here that we want to do to make sure that that comes across well and strong. The first thing we're going to do is going to talk about the repeated notes. There's a few of those in here that we're going to need to address. The second thing we're going to do is talk about the tempo. All right, from the repeated notes. From the very start, we have a lot of repeated notes. So within the first six measures, we only have two note values, one C and then a whole bunch of A's. So you have to actually very carefully think about how you want to produce those A's. Because if you just sit there and go A, 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 it doesn't feel like it'll go anywhere. It's not the most lyrical thing. It probably won't make you think about love in any fashion. So we have to think about what it would sound like. This is what it would sound like without doing anything on it other than just sitting on an A. Yeah, so that's just as, you know, a lot of the same note. Um, the reason why it is a lot of the same note is, again, there would have been text to this, so each note would have been a different word, or at least a part of a word, so things would be changing in the vocal part. But we don't have the text, we're not singing, so we have to do something. There's various ways that you could do something here. One is the articulations, so making sure one each note when it says come in, you actually articulate it. Sometimes our tongue gets sloppy, and it kind of hints at a t uh, start of a note, but then doesn't come out clearly. So one, make sure to definitely articulate these things. Two, you can use your dynamics. You can do hairpins, you can do crescendo, decrescendo. Think about ways that you would uh, want to add dynamics and where this is going um, so that you can add a little bit of difference. Another way is vibrato. Now, vibrato is a whole topic I could talk about uh, for a video in itself. Um, but if you are utilizing vibrato or your teacher is helping you to discover your vibrato, I would highly encourage you to utilize it here. Now, the one dis um, disclaimer I have to say is don't just use consistent vibrato. Don't just wah, 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 the entire time. Because then that just causes the same problem, which means it's still uh, bland. It's just sitting there doing the same thing for all of these notes. So it's about changing the speed of your vibrato to add a little bit of variety. So I'm going to put some of those together and show you a way that this could sound like. Alright, so I made sure to tongue. I made sure to add a little bit of dynamics. I really crescendoed for a lot of it and then decrescendoed very much a little at the end. And then I used the speed of my vibrato to mix it up a little bit. So think about that at the very beginning. And then a similar area at 15, again, we have our A's coming back. You can decide whether you want it to be exactly the same or maybe something a little different. And then the last section when there's a lot of repetition is around 35. We start with C sharps and then they go to D flats. And although they're written differently, they are the same exact note. So again, they're repetitious. And you have to think about ways to make it a little bit spicier. You know, something that shares that love, that passion, by adding something to it and making it exciting. Now don't go crazy though, but do make it exciting. So the second topic is the tempo. All it says is moderato. If you listen to some piano parts of this, um, you might hear some varying speeds. 
Um, pianists particularly could stretch things out a little bit longer, potentially. I would challenge you to not go too slow. For both vocalists and bassoonists, we have to worry about breathing. And there's not, except for one uh, quarter rest, a lot of places that gives you natural spaces to breathe. So I would really think of it in a bigger um, beat. So rather than uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, which is gonna take a while to get through and you may end up slowing down. I would try to think of it in a little bit of a bigger beat. So, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It helps you move forward by thinking of it as in that bigger beat. It'll help you not to slow down because this is a long piece in the sense of you have to go all the way down to the bottom, back up to the top, and then stop halfway through. And without a lot of rests in here and a lot of places to reset, it can wear us out a little bit. So think of a nice flowing tempo. Think of it and think of the bigger beat while I play this. <laughs> It's a very beautiful piece. Put some um, thought into your repeated notes. Make sure not to go too slow. That's our review. So, you know, repeated notes, do something with them. And then number two, don't go too slow. Keep it moving forward so you don't um, end up making it longer and harder than it needs to be. All right, that's what we have for Lieberstrom. Go practice.